Hi, good morning and welcome back to the channel. This is a 2002 Porsche Boxster S in a rare forest green. Don't think I've seen one this shade before. The car is in this week for a two-stage paint correction detail, wheels off work, some interior treatments and protection on the surfaces. There is plenty to get stuck into. The car is going to be over a four-day booking, a four-day job. And in the inquiry process, the owner's response was beautiful. I know it's a lot to spend on an old, low-value car, but for me, some things just don't need to be logical. So that and more coming up in this episode of White Details.
So that's the wash pretty much complete and if you've been here before, you'll know at this point before we go inside, what I like to do, run the car outside into the yard, apply the brakes two, three, four times to take the surface water off the discs to prevent corrosion. So fire her up outside, three times the brakes, rinse the surrounding panels and the wheel arches before we go inside. Pretty clean, not a great deal on the clay bar. Clean car. When it's complete, I've got a big thing for green, green foam. And there should be more green cars on the road, personally. So the paint work, um, already before putting a light to the paint, I can see three panels, three areas that have been painted. One of which was a concern, or at least a, uh, a point of the owners, that the metallic distribution on the bonnet, sort of the metallic flake, was a lot different there than it is in the wing or oh, the rear quarter. The rear quarter, the metallic's a lot deeper, darker, richer. That is because the bonnet's been painted and actually under the light there is a very slight color difference as well. The bonnet being a shade lighter. Not a huge concern really outside. 
quite difficult to notice that. And then the bonnet. No, the bumper, same story. So I guess when the bonnet's been painted, and the bumper's been painted. The first area I went to with the customer when they dropped the car off with the light was down here and straight away. We have unfinished sander marks and examples of prep work, body shop, dealings. Ooh, perhaps the wing's been done as well. There's some blebs and relatively poor-ish paint here. Come on to that. So work around the car then, quick inspection over the top of the bonnet. There are, ooh, stray pigtails, buffer trails, deeper abrasions. There's a lot of clarity being lost here. Uh, and the overall clarity of the LED in the ceiling itself, the clarity is down. I use that example to the customer when they drop the car off. So I'll make a point of that again when they pick it up to show how much better it will be after the polishing. Definitely been repainted. A lot of room for improvement. Uh, these etchings have been here from the start. Apparently the customer's not been able to shift them himself. Bug etchings. Similar to bird poo, uh, the acidic content of bug splats, if left for periods of time, will etch the paintwork, similar to the bird poo does as well. Something to be careful of. But they will be lifted, no problem, I'm sure, with the cutting. And then the badge. The customer had a concern about the badge, which is covered in polished residue. It's got residue on that side. But also, as we go over the top, what the customer hadn't seen is there is green on the rubber trim. So, ah, a bit of a pet hate of mine, but when the bonnet's been painted, rather than the body shop, taking out the two bolts from through there, to remove the badge, they've painted around it. And as a result, there's an edge there, a tide line. So whether we take the badge out and polish, probably best we don't, I don't know. The customer's gonna let me know if they want to replace the badge, so we'll come on to that later. Plenty of bug etchings here in the front. There's buffer trails, sander marks, prep marks. Touch-ups required. We'll be getting a touch-up, a forest green touch-up stick for this one. Edge of the doors, the leading edge of the bonnet there, although I think that might just be... Uh, I thought that was polished residue, but it doesn't seem to be shifting. Uh, whether or not these rear quarters have been painted, I don't know. Um, 2002 Boxster. Usually, I guess, there should be some sort of stone guard PPF section there. Can't see any evidence of it being there previously. So I wonder if it's been painted and not replaced. A couple of touch-ups required. There's a bad touch-up there already. Toothpick rework required for the door lock. Edge of the door. It's been touched up quite naff there. I have to say the hood came up better than expected. That was quite patchy, it's not gonna be ever perfect. There's tide marks and I have to do what we can to the screen here as well, eventually. And the light lenses. Uh, and the third area that may have been painted, or I can see it as from here, is the rear bumper. The finish in the bumper isn't the best there, look. So under further investigation, I'm sure there will be more signs, yeah. Dirt and bits in the paint. Registration surround, pretty grim. Um, the residue has been removed. The customer's plate is only screwed on, so all this will be polished. And then around and above in the top corners, it's all heavy deposits from carbon soot from the exhausts. Some of the boxes we can see even here. Without regular care, the deposits soon start to leave a mottled, cloudy effect around the rear end. Ooh, a little ding here. I wonder if that's the reason why it was painted in the first place. Not repaired very well. Hmm, a couple of blisters. Blisters there underneath this near side rear vent. Haven't taken the paint depth thickness readings yet. And then back to the front wing, which yeah, this is definitely been painted along with the bonnet and front bumper. The Boxster badge, um, previously we have replaced these and been able to 
polish and cut and perfect the paint underneath before putting new badges back on. As you can clearly see, this could also benefit not only to polish the paint, but to clean up the edges where the lettering's all tarnished. Only so much can be done by hand to improve that. So waiting on a word back from the customer whether they want to go ahead and buy a new badge. So we got a whole lot of taping up to do to protect the vulnerable areas, the rubber trims, being mindful of delicate areas as well. These older cars, you just gotta tread a bit more carefully and work open-minded. Also, it's not gonna be perfect. We have a great budget for the car, and the customer said himself at the top of the video. I know it's a lot to spend on an old, low-value car, but some things just don't need to be logical, so. Do what we can at the time given, uh, concentrating on paintwork, get the interior nice. Uh, we'll come onto the interior in a bit. But it is a manual. It only has 60,000 miles. And who knows, perhaps a future appreciating classic. So, so the owner happy to invest a couple of grand into the car. Not only for their ownership, but to keep things sharper, for nicer, for longer, uh, for who knows, this may be doubling in value in the next five years. Crazier things have happened.
Front end is starting to shape up quite nicely now. It is half past six, nearing the end of day one. I've done the rear wing, the door, the wing, bumper. But tackling lenses, when you've got the little moldings and the information made in Germany, obviously all that polish, there was a bit there to begin with, but a lot of that is mine as well, having gone over them intricate spots with the one inch pad. And rather now, rather than now save that for the tooth pickery, pop tail stick and do the sort of detail areas at the end, a little trick. A little top tip is if you go over the same area again by hand with a tiny bit of compound. It is a much easier, faster, more efficient way of clearing the residues. Likely to be some back here as well. Yeah, haven't done the tail lights yet. Um, from previous polishing sessions, that's not too bad. For the rest of the night, as I say, half past six, I am gonna do the one inch section on the spoiler and then probably tackle the registrations around. Hand polish, hand polish, hand polish, hand polish. Three inch, one inch, one inch around the perimeter to clear up all of the deposits and grime. Under further inspection, it appears that a lot of the hazing could be overspray. Look at the lacquer line on the underside. There's a lacquer line, tape line, where the bump has been painted. Doing what I can, first of all, by hand, um, as you saw. There's a good amount of grub and dirt come off from the underside. I'm gonna switch to the three inch and now tidy up the edges with a one inch after. That is a lot better. Naturally, it sits behind the registration plate anyway, but even when the owner was here, we looked in the top corners. I pointed out how deposited and built up and stubborn it was. So he will appreciate the differences there. Uh, and with the scan grip D match up here now, we can clearly see it continues there. I was trying to show you that earlier. Didn't really have the right light source available. So that's me done now for the first day. I shall be back in the morning. Pick up on the rear bumper.
Before it once over, uh, I'm satisfied and pretty pleased with the results there on the rear screen. Uh, thank you to my friend Kelly Harris uh, of KDS Caltech and Lake Country Manufacturing for a few pointers and tips. I have a great deal of experience on said material uh, and also I've not, really, I've not fully worked it, not pushed the boundaries too much, it is enhanced. Lake Country orange light cutting microfiber Crush Chemi F6 followed by Purple Crush Chemi M3, my Lake Country HDO Black, and then the inside has been done by hand, only with H6 also. And this is now ready for the bin. But progress wise, polishing wise, every panel sort of responded a little bit differently. I perhaps jumped into my polishing pad combination a little bit too soon on the original panels. I've been struggling with sticky paint, Porsche sticky paint. Uh, it's pretty soft. My mechanical cutting is leaving lots of hazing. I've done some test refining, all is good. But I switched to Kosh Kemi Yellow F6 with the blue Lake Country cutting pads and I've had some great results. Pleased about the bonnet badge, that's not too much of a problem. A new badge front and rear is on the way. So the new badge will sit over there nicely once that's refined and coated. How many 986 Boxsters have you seen? with headlights that good. Whether they've been replaced or not, uh, I haven't done anything to them yet. All they need and all I will do is go over them with the refining pass. So the only thing that's left to cut now is the wind mirrors. One, two, do the finger polishing inside. Ugh. Behind the glass, there will be a tired line of dirt around the edge to tackle. And then also, the botched S badge, this needs cutting once the badge is removed. The template is made, refined, new badge goes on before the coating. All in all then, good progress. Really, I am about to pick up my phone, record a three or four minute video for the customer for WhatsApp as an update end of day two.
Right, with the exception of the boot lifters, we're still waiting on the boxed S badge to turn up before we can refine the full lot of that. That is the polishing complete. And I have to say, what a rewarding colour. You can keep your silvers, your greys, like my BMW, blacks. An exciting colour like this is so much more rewarding. So the rims, coated inside out, as well as the calipers with BC06 Modesta. Time to take a look at the interior. Ugh. Whoa. First up, a extremely thorough blow and a vacuum is required. Get all the crumbs and the dust and the bits. All this stuff down here, in there, out of there, from under there, probably in there as well. Yeah. The headrest sections for the back have been taken out already. They're normally filthy. Wait until we get the uh, damp cloth on them. So they were taken out to gain access to the rear window whilst polishing that. And the visor, bird poo. Bird poo on the visor. rinse water you saw was just from the two leather seats and the steering wheel and the second bucket of water you're about to see is plastics, dashboard, console, behind the seats, headrests, that's about it. Yubba! Still got to do the pedals, still got to do the fabrics and carpets and overmats and the leather needs a once over once again to rehydrate and further clean. But otherwise, shaping up okay, to be honest. Ten to five, Friday. Uh, I'm gonna blow the vehicle down now to eliminate any lint and dusting from my interior doing which is drafted onto the bodywork. I am then gonna wipe the vehicle down with isopropyl alcohol 50-50 to remove any further residues or oils from the polishing stages and then apply a handful, 30, probably 40, 
touch-ups. We're talking pinheads, tiny, tiny pinheads. On the wheel arch edges, on the lower portions of the front bumper, on the apron, on the mirror, on the side skirt, door edges, etc. And then, all that's left is BCO4 for the paint, convertible hood treatments for the roof, tooth pickery, door shuts, a final wipe down of M1 shot infrared curing for the paint, tie dressings, finishing touches. After tonight, uh, I'm actually away. I'm flying into Europe for a day tomorrow, back on Friday lunchtime. Um, can't really say what's going on, but heading to Europe. Uh, uh, uh. And I'll be back on the Porsche Friday, hopefully Friday, if not definitely finishing off on Saturday. At which point we should have some nice new badges to apply. Tweeters are always handy. Magnet.
that's what you call a two-stage <laughs> paint correction. Ah, total time, today is Saturday. I've not been on it since Monday because Thursday I was away. Um, although I did pick up on Friday afternoon for a few hours, so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday for half a day Friday. Four and a half days and a box done. And it's not a white detail. It might as well be. Might as well be. A couple of shout outs to make. First of all, to the Rack Company guys for A supporting the 100,000 subscriber special giveaway that was held a couple of weeks ago now. Thank you guys for that but also for the recent bundle and shipment of towels. I've been using the blue Edgeless 365 towels as my buffing cloth for my residue and polishing for four years, five years. And it's amazing how the towels last, how they perform, but actually how they've changed from what the new ones are to their hands. My old ones are old, fresh stock to replenish the stack. The 365 towels, along with a new drying towel to test Rags to Riches, from Rags to Riches, microfiber wash. And then another one of the giveaway items for the competition was a Pro Detailer magazine hand wash only book. Two of these were shipped out to two winners. It's an illustrated, a fully illustrated uh, beginner's guide to car care, all the way through to sort of more advanced techniques uh, and some good tips throughout. Pre-wash, decom process, machine polishing, principles of machine polishing, polymer sealants, paint protection process, lighting. Filled with good stuff, which you can find a link in the video description below to the hand wash only from the Pro Detailer magazine or the idiots behind the Pro Detailer magazine. Thank you chaps. In the last episode, the 997.2 Turbo S Porsche. Lots of comments and lots of people asking about the toothpickery or the, the wooden skewers. What are they and where are they? Uh, there's a link below in the video description down below to Amazon. And once upon a time, they start as a kebab skewer. Literally, yay big, which is no good to no one really. Snap that, got a nice pointed edge to be able to get into the tight spots, the intricate areas, and then it shoves up there for safekeeping. Check out the links below. It has to be said, the Boxster has come up beautifully once again. Should know these off the back of my hand by now, the shapes and the problem areas. Could anything have come up better or... Um, the interior, there are a few kick marks or scuff marks on the plastics, cosmetic damage, which can't be improved with sort of detailing, cleaning treatments. What else? A couple of nasty stone chips and touch-ups that were there to begin with. There was something else I thought of earlier, but it slipped my mind now. Can't wait for the owner to see this. Uh, in fact, hi Jim, how's it all going? I can hardly think about anything else. I just really want to see the car tonight, but it makes sense if I come tomorrow. So if you've made it for this far, thank you for your time and your attention. I know it's been a long episode by now. I've already started as it is of today, the editing, and already I'm edited through to 35 minutes. So I'm gonna guess it's a 55, 60 minute episode. So that just leaves me to say, don't forget to find white details over on Instagram for daily behind the scenes and updates. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Like the video if you've enjoyed it, share it amongst friends and communities perhaps. If you would like to support the channel further, there are a number of ways down in the video description below. You can buy white details a coffee, you can click on the thanks tab underneath this episode, or you can become a white details patron. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and bye for now. <coughs>